Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to this week's episode of All About Books. I have a special reading for you this week. We have author Morgan Murray here today and he'll be reading an excerpt from his novel, Dirty Birds. If you missed our interview, <laughs> I'll put links down below so you can watch the interview in full. And there'll also be a link at the end of this um, video that you can click on to watch it. So Morgan, uh, what are you going to read for us today? Hi, thanks, Crystal. Um, you mentioned that you really liked the uh, egg riot scene, and I don't <laughs> want to give away too many spoilers about the egg riot because I'm sure yes. everyone's dying to know. Um, so I'll read kind of the how the egg riot began. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. Um, so this is from I think chapter three, four, six, chapter six, a section called Toute la Nuit. The night had begun with Naughty, Ruddy, Ava, and Milton walking down to see Georgette's puppet theater company, Place de Poupy, in an all-night Victor Hugo puppet show marathon. It began with Cromwell. The epic lyrical play about the English politician, warlord, only commoner to be Lord Protector, Oliver Cromwell. The play was so long and complicated, 6,920 verses, 79 characters, countless extras, that it was 129 years from when it was first written before it was finally produced. This was the first time it had been staged with puppets. Georgette had explained that they needed 13 puppeteers to pull off the four hour long play with 39 puppets, nearly every single one in their inventory. High-end puppets cost thousands of dollars each, so the company would reuse puppets from show to show. It's rarely an issue. Just repaint the gray mustache of King Lear Brown and call it Cromwell. However, the number of puppets needed for this show required them to get creative with their puppet recycling. The lion from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe became Member of Parliament Death to Sinners Palmer. The skeleton from the Halloween production of The Nightmare Before Christmas became Bare Bones the Leather Dealer. They had no other choice but to make the parrot from their production of Aladdin, Lady Falconbridge. Cromwell's four jesters, Trick, Giraffe, Garmadoc, and Elspiru, were played by puppets who were previously Montreal Canadiens legends Rocket Richard, Boom Boom Jeffreyon, Toe Blake, and Jean Beliveau, respectively. They had been created especially for a 2005 show on a Tue Mon Frere Richard about the 1955 Richard riot. To add local flavor, the four Canadian puppets were left in their uniforms for Cromwell. That it was part of an all-night citywide arts festival, and likely because it was free, four hours long, started at 10 p.m. It was a 181-year-old lyrical play by a French poet about a British S disturber. There were seven people in the audience when Cromwell started. Half an hour into the first act, it dropped to six when Naughty, who was one of Milton's roommates, uh, who'd brought a case of Coors Light, drank his last beer, belched, and said, bleep this bleep, and loudly clanking beer cans and tripping over the legs of everyone else in the attendance left the theater. Milton didn't understand a word of it, and he was pretty sure Ruddy and Ava didn't either. But they were there in support of Georgette, so they sat through the first act, passing a bottle of cooking sherry between them that Ruddy had brought, grimacing with every sip. By the second act, all three of them were asleep, with Milton snoring the loudest. They were awoken by a house, the house lights when they came up for the intermission after act three. They'd already been there for nearly three hours, so they thought it was over and left. Headed for the bus to take them downtown to wander amongst the galleries and all-night diners, performance venues, and bus shelters slash concert halls for the night. Georgette, Georgette was royally mad what they didn't stay through the entire play, let alone the entire Hugo Marathon. She let them know about it with a barrage of curse words the next day when they were back at the apartment. The rest of the night blurred together into a lot of wandering around, lost and cold, standing on street corners and hotel lobbies and metro station entrances, trying to decipher very artistic, but otherwise incredibly useless map of venues and events. Ava and Rudy were bent on, being seen, on seeing as much as they were focused on being seen. The range of things they saw ran the gamut from an art house studio complex by the old port, i.e. an abandoned warehouse, where a hundred artists gathered to make art for 24 hours straight, to a small independent theater hosting a karaoke slow dance sock hop -a -thon. In a heavily graffitied alley in a particularly seedy part of town, a dance school hosted a multimedia performance that featured 12 naked dancers, six men, six women, dancing in the 22 below cold while video of a reenactment of Napoleon's march to Moscow was projected on their bodies. The 20 minute piece was set to run every hour on the hour, but had been canceled by the time Ava, Ruddy, and Milton arrived at 1 a.m. after two of the dancers were hospitalized with frostbite and the projector had been stolen. In the lobby of the Musée d'Art Contemporain, 
A performance artist from Newfoundland was splitting frozen codfish with an ax like they were firewood while reciting or more like screaming the 1949 terms of union with Canada. It only took him a few hours to go through all the 500 pounds of frozen fish he'd brought. So by 2.30 a.m. he was just pulverizing thawing fish parts with his ax while completing his fourth lap through Article 46. Oleo margarine or margin, margarine shall not be sent, shipped, brought, or carried from the province of Newfoundland to any other province of Canada. It's a true part of the Canadian constitution. <laughs> the smell of fish and trails hung thick in the air. No one watched for very long. Ava and Ruddy and Melton spent the longest time sitting in the dark corner of a ballroom in Casino de Montreal, located in the former French pavilion of Expo 67 on Ile Notre Dame, watching a silent rave. To avoid having the noise impact the casino's clientele of elderly attic gamblers and tourists, the rave was silent. The dancers wore wireless headphones connected to the DJ booth. The casino, in good capitalist form, found a loophole in the Tout la Nuit free-for-all policy by allowing anyone into the rave for free but charging $20 each for headsets. Instead of dancing, Milton, Ruddy, and Ava sat in the dark corner, coming down from their cooking sherry drunks, transfixed on the sight of hundreds of ravers, whacked out on ecstasy and $12 vodka Red Bulls, throbbing in unison in complete silence. Eventually, it put them all to sleep until they were awoken again by the house lights coming up when the party ended at 6 a.m. with the announcement of a free breakfast at the downtown bank. Breakfast? I could eat. Let's go. I'm already laughing because I know what happens next. <laughs> If you haven't had a chance to read Dirty Birds, I highly recommend it. It will transport you to another place, to say the least. So congratulations, Morgan. Thank, Thank you, you so, much. so much for being a guest on this week's episode of All About Books. And again, there'll be links down below so we can learn more about Morgan or purchase a copy of his book. Thank you.